Good morning. Welcome to the Bar and Sunday Morning Services. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. I do appreciate it. You can get involved. I call it 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. You can also email me, church at bondinfo.org. Church at bondinfo.org. And put your name in town, name in town on your emails, and I can respond as it is happening. And good morning, everybody. Hi, y'all. Life is something else. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh. uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Life can be a trip or it could be a nice journey. Have you noticed that? No? <laughs> but for most people, life is a trip and not a nice journey. But it's up to us to decide how, how we want it, you know, how we want life to be. A trip, because life can be a trip. It could be like shocking. <laughs> you could be up one more moment and down another one if you're on a trip. But if you're on a journey, it's a smooth ride. You do run across bumps, but it is uh, a smooth ride for the most part. But you got to find that road that puts you on a smooth ride. Put you on a smooth ride. And I think that's the problem, is that we've been so brainwashed and dumbed down that that road that is a journey is difficult to get on. Because we got so much stuff to overcome. Um, I've said this before. Our parents spend 18 years screwing our lives up, and then we spend the rest of the time trying to overcome it. It takes longer to overcome it than it is to screw it up. Can I say screw up at the, the pulpit? Yeah, that's not a bad word. Oh, okay. And, and um, it, it takes longer to over. well, it shouldn't take longer to overcome it, but it does because we don't understand how to. It really should take a second to overcome it. Absolute second to overcome it. But because no one tell, tells us how or shows us how to overcome it, it can take a lifetime. It really can. And my mission in life and what I hope to do is to always overcome myself, but also point the way to you so that you can learn to overcome and get on that journey and get off the trip. All right? Do you understand when I say life is a trip? Yeah. Who don't understand that? Oh, everybody do. Huh? That's good. So it's a trip for everybody then. <laughs> no wonder. And it's so unfortunate in one way because Christ came and he really bought us back. He paid the price to get us back so that he we could be once again become children of God, but only a few realizes that and find that little road that leads to that, and they don't become sons and daughters of God. How unfortunate is that, huh? It's like your parents wasted money on you. <laughs> you ever wasted money on somebody? You know, they, you help them with money, and then they get older, and then they Where's my money? Where's my investment? You know, but Christ put it all back in, in order. There is a, a, a stat that came out this week, I believe, and it says that most young people cannot handle stress. Most young people cannot handle stress today. And I'm thinking, wow, that's amazing because when you're young, you should have stress anyway to handle when I was growing up, now I may think of something later and I'll tell you, when I was growing up, I don't remember having stress. I don't remember walking around being angry. I don't remember coming home after school or after hanging out somewhere, knowing that I got to argue with my parents, my grandparents or anybody. I don't, and I had to work in the cotton field. 
and feed the hogs and pick cotton and peanuts and potatoes and plow mule. But yeah, I don't remember being stressed out in life as a young person. I only remember dealing with stress after I left home at 18 and that I'm on my own and that now I got to deal with life and I realized there were things I didn't know about life, especially coming from Alabama. But I didn't grow up a stressful person. We played outdoors, you know, we had fun as kids. But young people are stressed out today because their parents are so messed up. Their parents are so stressed out, so now the kids are stressed out. Because whatever you are, what your par- I mean, whatever the parents are, is what the kids become. What you put out is what they've got to act out. And we've got to change this. And it's real easy to change. And so there are two things I want to hopefully talk about today, unless you have something else. One is, are you stressed out? Why? And so we can get that worked out. And then I want to ask you about Jesus. All right? Because there is a misunderstanding about Jesus Christ. And as long as that misunderstanding is there, I don't think people are going to ever get on the right track. All right, so we'll get into that. I did see some hands. Yes, Hermes. Uh 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 uh. No, I was going to say that, uh, you know, you grew up in a different era, totally different environment than what, especially kids that are living in urban areas or cities. Yeah. And the schools, I mean, the parents, you're right, the parents are stressed out, but also it seems like the culture and society itself is adding to that stress. Right, but society are the people who get up in the morning and go out of the house. Right. They go to school, they go to work, they go to these places, and so once they leave home, they are the ones that bring in on this stuff because of what is going on in the homes. If the homes were better, then society would be better That's because we are society. We are the world. <laughs> Isn't that true? Huh? I also have noticed that parents today are afraid to raise their children. They don't really know how to do it. They're afraid of their kids. And then they're afraid to discipline them or they're afraid. And then if it's a divorce case situation, whereas the father and mother are having visitation rights with the kids, the kids are ruined because both parents are trying to appease the child and hope that the child will love them, and the kid is messed up. The children are messed up. Have you noticed that? Because they are spoiled, and they know how to play both parents, and they can sense fear in the parents. They know what parents are feeling and thinking, and they'll play on that because they're closer to God than the parents are, so they'll play the parents. I can hear my grandmother now. Boy, if you ever try to play me, it's going to be your last play. I locked you back to where we <laughs> But it's not like that anymore. And so what's going to happen to us? Did you have a hand up? Yeah, I was going to just add that uh, this past Friday, I had, uh, I had to chaperone an event in school. I was one of the parent chaperones. They had this dance. Yeah. And it's, you're right about that. As far as the uh, these parents watch their kids just, I mean, just run wild beyond anything that I've seen. Yeah. And won't do anything. They won't stop them. I mean, they're running over each other. I mean, literally putting themselves in danger to where they could be seriously hurt. And even the dads just won't say anything, won't stop the kids. And then if you say something to them, you know, they look at you like they're offended or that you did something wrong. (laughs) What a mess, huh? It's getting worse instead of getting better. Are you able to deal with stress? Right this minute, yeah. Right this minute. You have no stress I'm right now. I'm not stressed right now, but uh, there are times when stress does seem to, uh, you know, kind of overtake me. And why? Um, I don't know. It just seems to get inside. It seems to get inside? Right, right. Do you believe? Are you a Christian? Yeah. So you believe in Jesus? Yes. And if you believe in Jesus, how come stress controls you? Uh, because, you know, maybe I'm not born again. What? Because I'm, maybe I'm not born again. So you don't really know why? 
I think that's why. But why I'm do you think totally that? You just said you believe in him. I'm not totally committed to, um, to being connected to God or having really connected to God in the way that I should. Oh, you're not? No. And why not? I'm not committed to, just not committed to it. Is there a problem there? We just need people to wait for the mic to get there before they start speaking. Okay, wait for the mic. Okay. Mic. Go ahead. I'm just not, not committed to it. So then why do you I, say I see you... that I'm not, and I see that I need to be, but just haven't... What, haven't is, it, what is it that's more important to you than being committed to what is right? In theory, uh, nothing, but I seem to, I don't know, just... Just haven't made that, that commitment. And why? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I don't know why. So why do you think you believe in Jesus then? Um, I just, I, I think I believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> You're not sure about I believe him. in the Bible. I believe in, you know, I believe that Christ existed. Uh, I believe that, you know, what the Bible says about Christ. And, um, you know, I believe that. Yeah, I believe in what the Bible says about Christ. Oh, so you believe about him? I like to think I believe in him. You would like to think so, even if it's not true? Well, like you said, I mean, <laughs> you point out that if I'm allowing stress to come in, overtake me, I mean, that's a lack of faith. Um, and I'm not, I'm just, this is a service, and I'm just asking, I just want to get some understanding, because Christ said that we should know ourselves, examine yourself, know yourself. So you could have a clear understanding about everything. And so that's why I'm asking this in hope that, hopes that it will prompt you, as I have to do all the time, and to examine myself. I have to keep my eyes on myself. I really want to know. I want to know that I know that I know. I don't want to think that I know and then don't know. You know what I'm saying? I want to know that I know. And so I always keep my eyes on myself. That's why I'm asking. Yeah, I understand. And so do you examine yourself? Not as often as I should, or as closely as I should. Oh, OK. All right. Uh, let me take your hand behind you first, John, and I'll take you. Alex, we're talking about stress as growing up, and I remember um, as far as uh, that exterior stress that you're talking about, we shouldn't have. Most of it started coming along as soon as I uh, graduated from elementary school, and uh, where I had you know one teacher, and then now, now I had five to seven teachers, each of one each one giving you homework, and uh, you know not, so instead of having one homework or two homework, you had five to seven, and and I remember the peer the, the pressure. That the, that the school system puts on you for deadlines at, at such an early age. Right. And it seemed to me what they were trying to do is that they were aware that, that society is a pressure system with deadlines, et cetera. So they want to pressure you now to sort of somehow indoctrinate you into the pressure that you're going to be experiencing as, as you, as you uh, go on into the adult world. And so, so as an adult, do you still overreact to stress? I, it's, I'm getting better, but but yes, uh, you know I'm, I'm not I'm not beyond uh, uh, reacting yet. Uh, and, and why is that? Um, because uh, I think it's 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 a process, and it's a it's a, it's a gradual process. Uh, I I like you said, went through more than 18 years of, of totally destruction in my life, so it's it's mending together slowly, uh, but surely. Um, but uh, I think there's le leftover. Uh, past issues in my life that have not come to the surface that have allowed me to have, have, have let them go. I think that. And you say you think that it's a process. Yes. Is there anywhere in the scriptures where it says it's a process? Uh, I believe so, yes. I, where is that? Uh, I couldn't quote you the exact principle, uh, the, ex the exact uh, uh, scripture, but uh, uh, I think Apostle Paul mentions that it is a process. Oh, he did say that? Yeah, that is. Oh. A I think he himself was, says, said that. Uh, you know, um, what I want to do, I don't do, and what I, what I, uh, and what I don't want to do, I do do. And he had sin <laughs> that made a home in him. And I, I believe that was after he, he, uh, 
he had that experience with uh, Jesus. And is that what you call in a process? Uh, yes, I, I would say that he was in the process of, of, of perfect salvation. And I don't have perfect salvation. Um, well, how would you react to Christ saying that it only takes the blinking of an eye to change? I believe that that is possible. But not if you believe that there is a process. Well, that's, that's, that's true. <laughs> that's true. I, that, that is true. I, I have no response to that. I, oh, okay. I, is that food for thought? Yes, okay. absolutely. I do believe that is possible. And in a blinking of an eye, you can be... But if you believe that it's a process, you're not going to be able to believe that there's, it can happen at the blinking of an eye, the change in, within us, because you can't have two beliefs. You've got to have one or the other. Either you believe it can happen right now, just like that. Either you believe it's a process, you can't have two beliefs. You can only believe in one God. But my, my question to that, and I'm trying to understand, please. Yes. I'm not just no problem. That's what I, we're here I, for. Uh, I'm trying to understand. Uh, I mean, I, I do see... Uh, that I'm not the same person I was uh, a year ago or, or two years ago, yes. and I am reacting less. So if I see that, I, that, that you know, things are getting better for me, how can I not conclude that it's a process? So where you know, one day... That's a very good question. There's, no, there's nothing left over, so to speak. And you see that you're getting better. How can I conclude that it's not a process? By realizing that... It is what it is that you have changed mm -hmm. and accept the change now. And don't, I don't know how to, I'm trying to explain to you. And don't go with the illusion that Satan is giving you that it's a process. The change has taken place and you should believe that only. Because if you believe that it's a process, then you're going to live expecting it to take longer than it needs to. And you could be wiped out before that process ends. See, Satan's going to tell you it's a process because, you're t you know, it's taking a while. God said, it is now. Okay. It's done. And so I see my life as done. You know, once you enter in, then you start to just see more, overcome. You start repeating the same things over and over. And you find yourself getting better. I mean, it's like... Well, what really happens is you find the illusions falling away that make you believe or cause you to believe that it was a process. And that things have always been well. Things are already well. But the mind, don't, doesn't, which is your enemy, doesn't want you to think that. So you're saying that things, once you, once you, uh, you start changing, things are already well? Yes. Things are well, but in the, in the illusion of your anger, in your imagination, it doesn't seem to be that way. If you really, really look at your life right now, in this very moment, all is well. Everything else is a, is a, a, is a lie. I guess there's an, expe there's, there's an expectation in me that of perfect, of, of, of perfect, perfectness, perfect, being therefore perfect. And I know in my heart that I'm not. Um, however, what you're saying is that uh, it is possible for me to, uh, if I believe in Christ deeply, for me to become perfect as, as he is perfect, not You say you guess that's what I'm saying? Well, I'm trying to understand what you're saying. I think that, that if I believe if, 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 if I believe it can happen in twinkling eye, I lose all of all of my uh, anger. I lose everything, and uh, then on, stress will never be a part of me forever. Right. It, you will still have stress. Stress will come, but it will not control you. I mean, it will make you a better person rather than a bitter person, That's rather right. than angry or an angry person. On my way over here, Jesse, and I know I don't want to take too much of your time. I know there's plenty of people that. I'll just say it quickly. I'm on my way over here. Uh, I was, uh, you know, uh, traffic was, was, was a little bit tight. And I had this lady, you know, right, right, try to cut in front of me. And, and there was no more than a, a, a half a car. So there wasn't enough for her SUV to fit in. So she did where she put the left wheel to cut me off, you know, to, to have me break. So I honked at her and, uh, she, you know, she flipped me off. Right? <laughs> so, um, and I, I, I just went, like, I raised up my, I found out raising my hand. But I didn't, 
I can see like the anger a little bit rising, but I didn't, it didn't it take me. I didn't judge yeah. her. And I know if I just looked at it, it started dissipating. Yes. And then, you know, it, it didn't, you know, stay in, in, inside of me. Because that's kind of what you mean, is that you, I'm still going to uh, undergo uh, trials, and, 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 but if I don't ever judge, so to speak, ever fall to judgment, is that, you know, um, is that what we're talking about? Well, the fact that that incident allow anger to come up okay. indicates to me that you're still a judgmental person. That is, yeah, because yeah. well, it's, it's still there. There's just right. a little bit there. And that's what the problem is, because yeah. this place within, the kingdom of heaven within us, you cannot enter into that kingdom with the anger, because that nature is the nature of Satan. And God said, before you enter in, you must forgive. Okay. He's not going to let you in until you totally let that nature go. Right. And that happened. And so that, that incident this morning gave you an opportunity to see that you have not overcome that. That I'm not, that, that I'm not uh, pure and perfect, uh, correct. That you, that you have not overcome anger yet. You're still a resentful person playing God, and, and you, that's what you need to overcome. Right, and that can and, happen in a twinkling of an eye. If you don't doubt it, it can happen just like that. And the reason I know that, I had heard it all my life, it happened to me. Right. You know, he allowed me to see, he caused me to forgive, and change my life. And, you know, and so it can happen. Okay. All right? Okay, thank you. But let go of all that you've learned about God, too. Okay. Do not hold on to anything that you've learned about Him, about Christ or God. You let it go because that can be in your way. It sets up an expectation and if it doesn't go with your expectation of what you learn, you're not going to be able to accept what he would bring to you. Okay. Because it has to go a certain way for you. All right. that, that experience uh, where, where you, know, you let go completely, that happened at a certain point of your, of your journey, did, did it not? Yeah, it just happened, yeah. I don't know. If, I mean, if I was on a journey at that time, I didn't know it. I was just at a point where I was fed up with my life. I was tired of being weak. I was tired of being controlled. I was tired, didn't know how to deal with life. And I'm like, you know what, whatever, I'm done. And that's when I was able to see because I let go of everything that I was using to try to create a life for myself. And in that very moment, things changed for me. That's why I say you gotta let go of all your illusions. All right, yes, John. Uh, my question is a little bit off the subject. I wanted to ask it at the beginning of the meeting. Uh -huh. But my question is, I heard the scripture that, uh, that said no one comes to, to God except through Christ. Yes. And uh, I was wondering about that. Does that mean that other religions uh, that are not Christianity uh, don't know God? And the new uh, phenomenons, these new groups that practice the presence, but they don't mention Christ, does that mean that they also don't know God? I know it's a little bit off the subject. Well, it's a, I can answer it quick and then we'll move back to it. Uh, I don't know because I'm just now learning about all these different religions. When I grew up, I was just a country boy, a Baptist. And that was only one other religion in my whole state, I think. But I forgot what it was. And it wasn't Catholic. <laughs> and so I was just a regular Baptist that was taught and read in the scriptures if you believe in the Son, you can believe in the Father. And the way back to the Father is through the Son. And so that's what I, I know to be true. Now, I don't know if those people are, are being taught that or not and just speaking in a different language than what we are, what we are but mean the same thing. I don't really know. But I do know, and there's a reason to believe in the Son, but I do know that you have to believe. Well, I see that you need to believe in the Son to get to the Father. Of course, God can do what he wants because he knows everybody's heart. But that was the purpose of the son. All right. All right. All right thank yeah. you. Uh, yes, ma'am. So I wanted to bring up something, if I may. Um, and I feel comfortable talking about it in front of all the men here. Um, uh -oh. Because it's just something I need to get over. So um, as a little kid growing up, there was a lot of sexuality around our home. I was molested as a little girl, I've mentioned that, and um, 
you know, other advances were put in front of me um, that I was able to get out of. But it was just the whole environment it was very sexual. Yeah. And um, my mother was having an affair with a married man. My father would leave for work in the morning, and the guy would come, and I would hear them in the room. So it awakened a lot of things in me as a little kid. You know, I understand why girls wind up as strippers. It's just... Right. Thank God I didn't take that path. He had other plans for me. But anyhow, so <clears throat> this man that my mother was having an affair with, he tried to molest me also. Um, um, and at 18, he made an advance for me again. And I felt myself give in. I felt my body give in. And he didn't do anything, thank God. He, he just sort of messed with me, and right. he, he left. Um, I didn't realize this, but you had mentioned to me a while back when I came here, I talked about needing to drink, you know, drinking and whatnot, and um, you told me just to watch it. So I've been watching it, and nothing's been happening. But recently, about a month ago, I saw a picture of this man, the same man that my mom was having an affair with, right. old guy, and I felt this overwhelming, oh my gosh, you know, like I wanted to kill him. I went upstairs, I felt like I wanted to cry, but I didn't, but all of a sudden, once a couple of days passed, that feeling for wanting to drink had passed. And it's just a kind of amazing, you know, I, I mean, I hear this gentleman talking about the process and, you know, how in the twinkling of an eye and whatnot, but I think sometimes things, you don't know they're there, right. pop up, you know, and yes. I'm glad it popped up. Yeah. And I was talking earlier about it. I, I pray to God this is it. I don't know if it's it or not, but I, I hope it is. When you say, I pray to God that this is it, what do you mean? That this has been the reason that I've been suppressing my conscience and needing to Oh, alcohol. I see. Okay. I don't know. Right. I hope it is. Well, well, first of all, I would suggest that you just relax with that moment, this moment. You, you know, you've dealt with that. It's over now. And don't worry about the next moment. You know, don't be like, wow, I hope that this is it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, just, you know, your hope should be in God that he would show you how to deal with every moment. Because if you're like, wow, this is it, and then something else comes along, it's going to wipe you out. You'll be back in the bottle again because you're thinking that this is it, right? That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. I'm thinking this is it. Right. That's, yeah, that's where Let I'm that go. Okay. Yeah, and don't just take all you have is right now. This moment, no, there is no future. So don't think, oh, you know, I hope in the future I, I'm, I'm done because that's going to make you go back into your imagination and you will be wiped out. Just be grateful for now. Okay. You saw this man again. You dealt with it. It appears that you're over it. Don't worry about it. If I'm going to go back to drinking and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, be because worry like shows a lack of faith, too. It's true, and I don't feel like I need to go find him and confront him and all. You know, right. it's done. He's yeah. old. He's I don't even know where he is. Right. But just seeing his picture was amazing. I'm glad I saw it. I'm glad I found it, and I'm glad I saw. Wow, this has been in here, and I didn't even know it. Yeah. One of the things I realized from my own life is that, and other people too, uh, people are so identify with this false self, mm -hmm. and so if you are molested or your parents beat you up or whatever. Because you resent the situation, it feels like you. You start to identify with that. Mm -hmm. But if someone had said to you a long time ago, you know what? Yes, that's awful. That was wrong. But don't hate the person. Yeah, I hated them. Just don't yeah, hate don't them hate because the when you hate them, your spirit, the real you is separated from God. And now you're just living in darkness, overreacting to everything. But if you could just not hate, you would see that. This thing happened to your body, but it did not happen to you. And you're not your mind and body. And, but when you have a hatred, you identify with your mind and body, and that's where the problem is. You know, Jesse, I think I might still hate my mom because I couldn't believe she would choose this life. Why would she choose such a scumbag, and why would she do this to my dad? You know, why would she be so weak? And he tried to molest my sister. She went to him and told him. She, my mom didn't do anything about it. You know, this whole thing. I understand why you think that way. And it may, you know, uh, but it's foolish to think that way. I agree. And the only way you think that way as an adult is because you really don't know yourself. Right, right. Because if you could see the things you do that you do not want to do, as you quoted that scripture, something else is making you do it. And you wouldn't want other people to judge you for something that you absolutely have no control over, 
Uh, if you can understand that about yourself, it will help you understand why your mother is like that. And I get it and in it my head. And it will cause you to have compassion for her. I do. Be honest with her because your mother does not want to be in that kind of situation. She's dead now. Well, she didn't want to be in she, that situation. Uh, no, so. most people don't want to be in cheating on each other and not protecting their children and all that, but they have not learned how to overcome. And so, if, you know, as an adult, you should get to know yourself so you can have a different relationship with your mother. And that when you see her like that, you won't be saying, oh, why is she with this scumbag and all that? <laughs> you will understand why she's with him. You know what I'm saying? I get it in my head, Jesse. I understand in my head why she was, but not yeah. in my heart yet. Yeah. And I want to. And that's where the problem is. I, it is. And with this guy, too, who knows what happened to his life and why he turned out to be like this. And Most people do to others what was done to them. Yes. yes. Most people do that. And they are out of control. That's why God said, let you, without sin, cast the first stone. Now, it doesn't make it right, but we are dealing with evil. And there is good. And if the homes are messed up, if the parents are weak, they introduce us to evil in the manner that we, because we were born in sin. But you got to get to know yourself so you cannot judge others. And that doesn't mean you won't be honest, but you have compassion. And then they will see that light in you, and that light in you, which is of God, will be able to help some people. Last time I was here, Jesse, you told me, if I don't forgive everybody, I forgive no one. Right. You know, and yeah. I really didn't know I still hated this person. Yeah. I really didn't know that. I want to stop hating him. Yeah. I want to stop hating these people. Well, just realize, yes, it was wrong, but this guy, something had to have happened to him for him to do that. Yeah. And believe me, he's not happy doing that. He just doesn't have anyone to tell him how to overcome it. People, we live in a sinful world, and we were born in a crazy family. I know. And if... As Christ was the light so that we can see, when we start to wake up to him, we should become the light so that others can see. That doesn't mean you don't protect yourself. You don't have to play with them, hang out with them, but don't hate them. You can't hate. I mean, you can, but you're not going to be happy that way. And you're not going to be able to help others because the light of God will not shine through you. I got little kids watching me. Yeah. My kids, they're watching me. I, I got to... I need to for myself and for my family. And the kids will become what the parents are. You can't deceive them. They become whatever you are because they, they look to you the way we look to God. Mm -hmm. As adults look to God. Thank you. You're welcome. But just relax. You know, watch yourself and it'll start to change. And don't worry about if you're going to take another drink or not. I am worried about that. You are? I am. And, and Why? Because maybe I think that... Speaking to the mic for me. I don't know why I'm worried about it, Jesse. Yeah. It's silly. It really it is. is silly. I think that it's too good to be true. What's too good to be true? That, that I've overcome this. Yeah. I think it's too good to be true. Well, don't worry about it. It is what it is for now. And if you don't worry and you do take another drink, it won't have the same impact on you. But if you worry and you take that drink, one is going to lead to two, two is going to lead to three, three to four, and then you find yourself loaded up with big gallons of wine. and <laughs> <laughs> But if you don't worry, and worry, not worry, just faith, you'll be fine. Because in that worry, you take that first sip, you'll be like, oh, <laughs> ain't this wine good. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to drink one, one glass. And you fill it up like this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make sure you find the biggest cup in the house. <laughs> you tell yourself, I'm just going to take one drink here, right? But you find the biggest cup, and it's going to take up half of the bottle. And by the time you finish that, you're so drunk, then you say, oh, I might want to knock the rest of this out. <laughs> And then I wait for the medication to take its toll, you know, and I'm kind of feeling really relaxed and all that. And I'm like, this is great. Yeah. Man, this is great. Have no fear. God is with you. Yeah. He's with you. He really, really is with us. He's really with us. But we got to tear down these walls of illusions that we live by. But God is with us. I had a young man to come in my office with his father this week. And... Uh, but well, this is a new day, right? New beginning of a week, this past week. And angry, out of control, parent couldn't do anything with him anymore, divorced parents. 
uh, been to all kinds of psychologists and psychiatrists, and he, he went to all these people, he learned their ways, how they, they manipulate, try to manipulate his mind, that he just say what they want to hear. He says what they want to hear. But in 10 minutes of being in my office, he broke free of that anger. Just even just explaining to him what we did at Bond helped him to see that, how to overcome it, you know. And you can just see that a load was lifted and his father was shocked and happy because no one else has been able to help the guy. But he was able to do it, to just overcome just like that, just by somebody relating to what he was going through, you know. For a while there, I, I used to think, I'm not going to know how to be faithful in a marriage because I wasn't taught that. And so I was afraid that I might cheat on my husband yeah. or, you know, that I'd follow the path of my mother. It's silly. It's silly. Well, we only follow the path of our parents when we, you know, become like them from resenting them. So we're going to take that same road. But don't worry about that. When you love God, when you love what's right, your values are there. Yeah. And then they are right in front of you because you're not going to want to hurt your family. You can't see yourself cheating on your husband. Those values of God that's in us will guide you. They really will. See, I know that he pulled me out. Yeah. How else could I have come out of all that? Yeah. I know he pulled me out, so. So relax. Yeah. Take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not telling you to take a drink. I can see you now at lunchtime today. <laughs> well, Jesse told me to take a drink. <laughs> now, let your, let your conscience be your guide. We, we're, we're put here to learn to love so God can create love through us. I love that, too, because once you overcome this anger, your nature has been renewed, your mind has been renewed, you're, gonna be in, you're not going to be arguing with foes, you're not going to be carrying on and acting out. God will give you a few words just to hopefully help those people, your family members and friends and things like that. And even if you can't change them, you have the patience to wait for and hope for a change in them. You cut back on words, all this stuff that's going on. You become a, a, a quiet person within. It's all going to change. And then you're starting to just get better and better and better, overcoming these misconceptions that we have about life and in life. And I'm telling you, it is absolutely amazing. And then each moment prepares you for the next moment because if you deal with this one moment properly, you're ready for the next moment. And thank God for that, because the next moment could be a rough moment. And if you overreact until the last moment, then you're going to be wiped out in the second moment, the next moment, and then the next moment got you. Then, you know, but you got to learn to be still right now and overcome. Just overcome. And it's something else. It is more, there are no words to express it. Really. As a matter of fact, if you hold on to what I'm saying, the words that I'm saying, you're going to miss it. Words can be very deceiving. So don't even hold on to the words that I speak. Just let it go in one ear and out the other one, and the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. And you'll come to know it. But if you sit here and hold on to words or out there in TV land, hold on to words, you're going to try to make those words work out for you, and it's not going to go well. And a lot of people do that. They are hung up on words. They are absolutely hung up on words. Words can be a great de deceiver because they hang you up just like that. Let me tell you. Uh, here. I saw your hand a while back. Yes. Whatever was, it's gone. Oh, okay. All right. See, you got help already. You've been healed. Yes. Okay. Um, as you were talking, that I, you know, the scripture that came to mind as you were uh, talking was that make straight and ready the way for the Lord. So um, I think what we're all doing, and I'm not, if I can. Not necessarily speak for everybody, but... Yeah, just speak for you. I'll speak for myself. Yeah. Okay, very good. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Is that uh, we, we are uh, 
making the, uh, our, our way ready for... When you say we, is there someone else attached to you? Yeah, that's true. You're right. You're right. I can't speak for anybody else. <laughs> right. It's hard to speak about you, huh? Yeah. Um, because I feel better. If you want to re reveal your weakness, you got to attack a truckload of folks onto you. <laughs> so you don't feel alone. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> um, I guess, uh, well, I don't guess, but what I see myself doing is making uh, myself ready for, uh, for Christ to truly enter in, into my uh, heart and mind so that I may change in the twinkling of an eye. And, and I, I, that's what was coming to me as you were speaking, that uh, abstaining from, you, 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 you have the, I have what, you know, certain things that I have to abstain from. You abstain from sin, uh, things that you know, so that it may happen for me. Right? No. Uh, no? No. Okay. Please explain. <laughs> First of all, you can't make yourself ready. How are you going to abstain, abstain from sin when you are a sinner? Well, isn't that what prayer is, 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 is uh, the prayer is all about? It's, it's for that you be watchful, that you not fall into temptation? How are you going to make yourself abstain from sin because let's say that you don't you don't drink you know you're an alcoholic then you stop drinking right? right if you hold yourself back from that you're going to find something else to replace that with so you're not saying to sin so so you so 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 what are you are you saying to uh the, the whole idea about the prayers that, that that we find detachment from these things so you just quoted paul and paul said that the things he didn't want to do he realized he could he had to do them right and so how are you able to abstain from sin if you you're, you're a sinner that's your that's your nature right now how yeah how by uh, uh by starving it and allowing the moment to pass so that it, we get weaker in you oh uh, and you believe of yourself and you can do something uh, not without the grace of God, no. The way, well, only thing God asks of you, I don't know if it's the only thing, but the one thing that he asks of us is that we admit that we are sinners. And then admitting it, he would do the rest. Don't be in denial about it. He didn't ask you to abstain from it because the more you try to pull away from a spirit like that, you're just going to find something else to get into. You're going to go nuts. Mm -hmm. You start overeating you start smoking cigarettes. You start smoking a joint. You know what a joint is, right? Yeah. How I do you know? do that. I no longer do that. Oh, okay. <clears throat> a long time ago. But you'll find something to get into. Mm -hmm. It's not your will. It's God's will be done. And so you're trying to will yourself away from sinning, and that's just going to drive you nuts. Okay. Just recognize that you are, have no opinion about it, and then he'll change it. Okay. Of ourselves, we can do nothing. And of ourselves, we know nothing. It's the Father that's in us. He does and he knows. Even Jesus said that, you know, don't marvel over me. Don't act out over me. It's not me. It's the Father that's in me that's doing these things through me. And so if you can relax in that, you'll be fine. I see what you mean because there is at times where, uh, you know, uh, I don't, I, 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 I fall to temptation, and I can see that temptation to resent myself. I see what you mean is that yeah. not to do that. You can't control it. I see that. Thank you. If I could have controlled my life I would, at 20 years old, I wouldn't have waited until 38 to get over it. I tried not to do those things. And the more I tried not to do them, the worse it became, because I may hold off for a minute with one thing, but then I found something else to replace it with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Of yourself, you can do nothing. Just acknowledge that you are a sinner and don't hate being one by judging yourself. And God knows your heart. He'll come in and do the rest. You just be still and let him do it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let me take it right here. Hi. Thank you. I, I, I had a question about uh, you mentioned on, on the will. It is it is okay for I myself to utilize my free will since that was a God given or nay? I don't know. That's why I'm asking. That's a very good question. Answer that. I, I'm not. When you say you utilize your free will, what do you mean by that? Give me an example. Of what you mean. Of it, um, 
um, I don't know. I want to buy ice cream cone. I'm going to go do it or whatever. Oh, I see. But I'm just saying you utilize my free will in, in any aspect um, since it was God-given. Does not God want me to utilize stuff that he gave me? Or I, I, I'm, I'm perplexed you know, a little bit, and so I'm asking, and I hope it's not a, uh, it's a very good know, question. nonsensical question. I'm, no, I'm it's an that. excellent question. Thank you. Okay. Thank um, you. In getting to know myself, I don't see where I really have a free will. You know, I was born in sin, and it's the sin that caused me to do the things that I don't want to do or didn't want to do. And then when I recognize that I am a sinner, and, and, and when I'm born in sin, I'm controlled by sin. You know, my will is that, whatever that sin will is, is what I tend to do. You know what I'm saying? But when I acknowledge that I, I am a sinner need to be saved, to get out of this hellhole, and my desire is to believe in God. Look like it appears that when I enter into, when He caused me to enter into that kingdom, I'm now subject to Him. You know, I'm being controlled by that spirit now, and that's a better spirit to be controlled by than the one that I come, you know, came away from. But it seems as though whatever, whomever I serve, tend to control me, and I don't see where I have a free will. It's like being frozen in time. If you're addicted to alcohol, then alcohol controls you. You know, whether you want to get out of it or not, you don't even have a choice almost. It, make you, it talks to you and tells you how to do it, how much to do, how to sneak around and do it, whatever. It'll make you do it. So it controls me. So it appears that the God that we serve is what controls us. Have you noticed that? I guess my mind would go, okay, if it's a baby with a, a, a small child with a person, when a personality starts to develop and that's a, a free will kicking in that's God-given, and so maybe I'm right. still perplexed. But the so. secret to that is that even though that child is born into sin, we've all been born into sin because what Adam did, those kids are closer to what is right. They're closer to God. They're more innocent. And they are really being controlled with that identity it's just that after a while, the parents screw it up by not being patient with them and yelling at them and stuff like that. But kids are not even in control either. They see what's right, and you know, they see what is, and they do it. They test things, and they don't like being controlled by something else as well, more so than we are as adults for the most part. Thank you for the food for thought. Yeah. You know, but the parents don't. The parents don't like the innocence of the kids anymore. They say, oh, they got too much, they have too much energy. You know, I can't stand all this. My granddaughters, whenever I see them, they are like busy bees. And I can only handle it for an hour. And they just into stuff, you know, they got they want to talk, they want to play, they want to do this and do it. And I'm like, you know what? Grandpa, we're glad to see you coming and glad to see you leave. Grandpa tired. And they never get tired. And if they haven't been made to be angry, they don't really get angry. And if you do offend them, and you say, oh, I'm sorry, I was wrong, they forget about it just like that. So they're being controlled by what appears to be love and understanding more so than the adults. But as they get older, and you know, they start resenting their parents and situation, they lose that innocence, and now they're living in darkness, and they spend the rest of their life trying to overcome it too. But they're controlled by God. They're controlled by what is right for the most part, unless they've been truly corrupt. I don't see where we have a free will because I would never will myself to do anything wrong. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't will myself to hurt my fellow man or hurt my own children or hurt myself. I wouldn't will, I will myself away from that. You know, and a lot of us do things that we don't want to do to one another, and then we regret it later. You know, I want to say that um, um, we are, I, I mentioned earlier, we are not our mind and body. We are a living being. We really are a living being. In, inside of this body. And if we can, you can find that. Where you can learn to be still, be honest, so you can see, you're going to enter into that kingdom 
and you're going to become aware of, again of who you really are, a living being. You're not the stresses around you. You're not the illusion of your imagination. You're not your job. You're not your friends. You're not your pastor. You're not, you're not these things. You're not people, places, and things. But the problem is, in society today, is that so many people are identified with something else. Something else. Their jobs, their friends, you know, this competition is so great now for the young folks. Everybody got to get an A so they can get the best job. They can be first in line. You got to go to school from the time you pop out of your mama's womb until you're 90, you know. And people are identifying with something else other than the living being that they are. And so when stress comes, they identify with it and it freaks them out because they're afraid of losing their identity. They're afraid of not being the best or they're afraid of not getting chosen or having the right kind of friends or having all the money or losing family members or someone liking you or not liking you. You got to, those things, you shouldn't be identifying with those things. You should see that you are a living being and start living your life. Just living your life. It'll unfold by itself. It creates a perfect personality. You know, you're able to just live. You're able to see. You're able to live. And the good thing about it is that God is adding on to you. You would never go without. Don't worry about what you're going to eat, where, you, what you're going to, where you're going to sleep, what you're going to wear. You would start just living your life, but you got to disassociate with this illusion in your imagination which comes from the ego based on angry, anger. And most people are angry, right? And so they're, they're attached to the world instead of just being a living being and allow life to unfold for you. Whatever is so important to you that it controls you, you need to let it go. You really need to let it go. Because it's going to keep you from uh, entering into the kingdom of heaven. I was going to read this, but I don't have time now. You can read it later in Exodus uh, 3.13. Moses asked God, how do I tell the people who you are? You know, you remember that story? And he said, just tell them, I am that I am. I am that I am. And in and, and reality, that's who we are. We are what we are, who we are. We are children of God. We are a living being, and we need to live that way. But, you know, when I first read that, tell them I am that I am, who in the world is going to understand that? That doesn't even make sense. Well, who is your God, Moses? you like, we're just tell them I am that I am. Okay. <laughs> but if, you, if your heart is inclined to what is right, toward good, more so than toward evil, then the understanding of that would be revealed to you. I am that I am. And it'll make sense to you, but it'll also help you understand yourself too. It'll help you come to know who you are as well. And God will reveal to us if we let go of all that we have learned. If we let go of the word, you know, words, and become children of enlightenment, so that things are revealed to us. Revelation. You want revelation in life. You don't want all these, you don't want this attachment to the world. And the interesting thing about it, what's so interesting about it, this is what I really like about God. I, I love a lot of things about him. He's always giving us situations in life to wake us up to that. He's saying, look, this means too much to you. You know, this is why you're tripping. Let it go. But what do most people do? They try to figure out how to hold on to it even more so. They don't pull away to learn, well, what is my relationship with this person plays a thing that I'm having so much hardship with it? He's trying to get to us because he loves us and he's always looking out for us. But because we've been so brainwashed about him, we have the wrong concept of God and of Christ that we try to get there with what we have learned, and that's not going to work. It's really not going to work. 
And I'm sorry that that has happened to us, but it is what it is. But thank God for Jesus, we can overcome that. But it's going to take you looking at yourself and don't, hold, don't put anyone as an idol in your life. Don't, have, don't worship the preacher. Don't worship your daddy, your mama, your friends, your automobile, your drug. Don't worship because that takes the place of God. Don't worship your weakness and don't even worship your strength. It is what it is. And God can come in and change our life. He did not send Christ for the world to be fallen apart in the manner that it is. He's with us. We are a living being. Wake up and live that way. You're not, stop identifying with things. This stuff is here today and gone tomorrow. Friends are here today and gone tomorrow. Stop weighing yourself down trying to hang out with them and be with them and be all that to them and put on this phony attitude about yourself. It's a waste of life. Relax and enjoy life. Unfold. That makes sense? Yes. You're not going to be able to do it, though, until you can admit that you are a sinner that needs to be saved. And sinning meaning you have resentment of yourself and others, you're constantly judging yourself and others. You're playing God, and that is the nature of the devil, and you cannot serve to God. Admit that you've learned the scriptures, and all you do is quote them back, and life is not changing. You know, stop pretending like life is changing because you know the scriptures. You got to say, well, you know what? If I know the scriptures, I can quote John and Paul and... James and Jane's mama, but nothing is changing. <laughs> and people are in denial about that because their mind would tell them, well, the change will come later. You know the word, put the word in your heart, the change will come later. Satan is always telling them something to prevent all of us from getting to that place we want. Stop listening to the lie. If you can doubt your imagination, you can believe in God. You can believe the truth. That makes sense? So look at yourself this week and recognize how you are. And don't let Satan tell you that that's not how you are. You are that way. All right? And just let it, start letting it go. Stop deceiving yourself. Stop pretending. Because it doesn't have to be that way. But you got to forgive. Forgive others and God will forgive you. And forgiveness is interesting too is that, and I know I saw some hands and I'm going on and on, but I'm looking at the clock and this is so important. You can't even make yourself forgive because everybody and their mama going out there, oh, I forgive you. No, you don't. And in the situation to come back again, you're mad again. You are mad again. You need to see that you need to forgive. It's a spiritual act, and God will cause you to forgive. You need to be conscious of yourself, and in consciousness, which is the mind of God, you can, all things are possible. And I don't mean consciousness, I don't mean the intellectual consciousness, because you can hear what I just said, and now you're trying to do it, right? Like, oh, I'm aware. I'm aware I'm mad. That's all it means. <laughs> There's another awareness that is revealed to you. So forgive. Stop hating. Any little iota, a little bit of taste of minute anger is evil, is of Satan. You need to let it go. In a bit of, when God removes your anger, he takes it all away anyway. I'm done. I'm done. Bye. Thank you guys and ladies here. For more information, to purchase a copy of this program or to make a donation, visit us on the web at bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-2663. That's 1-800-411 bond. You're already home.